I'm Yanelisa Plani, born and raised um, in Duikua, a small town um, in Eastern Cape. So basically for my primary, I went to Canon Academy, then moved to another primary school um, called Ngubetole Bam JSS. And then I did my high school in JS Genjana. And currently I'm a fifth year medical student, also pursuing my officially first year masters um, in neuroscience um, and physiology. And I am a Mandela Rhodes Scholar. What inspired you to pursue a career in medicine? I think it was up until I got into high school and then I really enjoyed maths. So I thought, okay, I would be doing actual sciences until I had to obviously just turn inside myself and just try and ask exactly like, what do I actually want to do? And I think I just reflected on um, what has affected me and what has shaped me. And it just took me back to the loss of my um, aunt um, who I lost in 2013 to cancer um, in July and then shortly eight months after I lost my gran to um, esophageal cancer as well um, so I think those two losses actually just inspired me to do medicine and come into medicine in as much as like the decision was really hard um, to, to make and I had to just put it on God um, and it worked out. Could you share some of the challenges you faced while transitioning from high school to university and how did you overcome them? So transitioning was really hard for me um, uh, because I had experienced a loss just before I actually came um, here and that basically led me to basically become so much withdrawn and it led to me actually repeating my first year i got into the the intervention program um, but it's basically an extended program of medicine so i got into that and um luckily through that like we had really like good um staff members who were actually there to actually mentor us and helping us to actually manage our emotions which is something that i hadn't really done before so it really helped just to it, it was more of a healthy environment for us to actually grow and focus in our words um, before we can actually focus outwards um, in, and yeah, truly excel in our academics. So you're currently doing a, a master's um, concurrently with, with your medical degree. How do you balance your academics and your leadership positions and social life, etc.? I think I always point to my why. Um, for me, that's basically the main thing that's driving me um, and the main reason I do the things that I do it's my why and I want to help people out and um, it's more of a calling for me like I didn't choose it to be honest um, God chose it for me and so I always point to the why and the purpose behind it and it's hard um, as one can imagine medicine is hard on its own it has a lot um, but if you know your why, then it's easier to push in because you know what you have to do with your time because you know exactly like what you want to achieve. So what motivated you to establish the African Research Society? Yeah, so for me, I think being a doctor is completely different. Um, like the idea I had of what a doctor is um, was completely different. And I think it's because of the environment I was in. I didn't see much of doctors around me. Um, so I had the idea I had of a true doctor is someone who actually sees patients, heals patients, but also tries to come up with solutions um, for the patients in terms of trying to figure out in a scientific aspect, um, like, okay, this is cancer, how does it develop and what um, treatment um, like uh, modalities can we actually try to come up with to actually help um, our patients. And so that's the idea I came in with until I sat down and then realized, oh, okay, this is not actually what medicine is really about. It's more focused on the um, population, on the, um, on, on the patients. Um, so that was my idea. So when I came in, I was like, okay, this is not what I expected. So I tried to find ways of actually trying to integrate what I thought I was coming into. And then I heard about the intercalated program and then realized not a lot of students actually have access to the integrated program. Um, that's when I actually um, thought, okay, maybe I should actually start 
um, the African Research Society, um, which is basically there to actually try and bridge the gap between students and the world of research, um, which I think is very essential for anyone actually um, in whatever field you're in. I think research is very much fundamental in actually coming up with the solutions um, and actually even thinking um, in, like um, like um, in the future, like what can we try and mitigate and try to help our population. So that's what... Um, that's what we're basically trying to do um, encompass that for people who are actually um, insp like aspiring to become researchers but also just maintaining that environment of people who are already involved in research um, so that we actually keep the people who are already like inside the field you have recently been awarded the mandela road scholarship um, being a Mandela Road Scholar is a significant achievement. Can you tell us more about the scholarship and how it has impacted your educational journey? So basically it's a scholarship awarded to um, students who are pursuing their master's degree and who excel academically in leadership, in entrepreneurship and also have an understanding of re reconciliation. A lot of people now when they look at me they don't see someone who actually failed their first year. Um, so for me it just affirmed Everything that had happened, it happened for a reason and I had to go through all of it, so yeah. What advice would you give to high school learners who aspire to study medicine? It's important to have, I think, a deeper, I don't know, like a deeper meaning to it, add some meaning to it and add a purpose. So you need to understand exactly like, it goes back to my, to the previous question, why are you doing it? Um, what value does it bring to you and does it like, value that like it brings to other people as well so if you have that defined then you can go right ahead um if you haven't um if you don't have the answer to that i think it's also important to evaluate other like fields like i said i thought medicine was something else when i came here it turned out to be something different but luckily uct had like a program that actually tries to integrate what i like both my interests so it's important to understand, I think, why you're doing something and why you have to do it, because it does get tough. So if you don't understand your why, um, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard and medicine is hard. Have you had any role models or mentors who have significantly influenced your career path? Yeah, so I think in grade 10, honestly, I, I don't think I would have been able to come to UCT or even get the good grades I got. Um, if it wasn't for um, Mr. Matupa, yes. So he was my physical teach, um, physical science teacher, and he's literally one of the first people who actually saw a potential in me and basically took me under his wing. And he was just there to affirm, "You can do this. Dream bigger." Um, so he's basically one of those people. And my mom, honestly, she's she's amazing. She's always been there for us, just trying to make sure that even though we're not from, like, we don't come from much, that we don't actually feel that um, deficit. And also just, she's just a strong woman and she's um, basically like inspired me to also um, be a strong woman. And actually even in spaces where like, they're dominated by male, just to know, okay, actually I do belong. Um, and I've had countless other mentors, honestly, so I can't, mention one or the other then it will be like you know i'm not yeah appreciating the other people but i've had a lot of um mentors are like along the way um even when i had repeated my first year um dr emmy um uh, bedenhurst was always there just to affirm as well just doing the same thing my physical science teacher was doing just to affirm you actually got this and it's those people who actually like help you also just stand your ground and be like, okay, cool, I'm going through it, but I can do it. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years and what are your long-term professional goals? 10 years, 10 years, I'll be 34. So <laughs> um, hopefully I'll be done with medicine by then um, and pursuing maybe, I don't know, a registership in neurosurgery. Um, and I think my, my bigger goals are to have an impact on um, disease poverty um, or like, let me just explain what disease poverty means to me. So currently I'm doing my master's um, in uh, neurosciences and I'm focusing on neurosticosis. So when I was actually writing up my literature review and I realized 
there's a lot of things that um, actually impact um, populations like where I come from, um, which shouldn't, to be honest, um, because it's things that are very much preventable, but um, our healthcare system is not doing much to prevent them. So I see myself actually trying to do more advocacy work on that aspect um, of um, disease um, poverty or poverty diseases, basically, um, because I believe no one should actually die or actually end up in hospital just because of their social um, um, circumstances. So yeah. If you could go back in time, what message or advice would you give to your younger self in high school? I'd say just focus on God because then it's easier. Um, everything just, it's, it's so much easier when you just focus on God because I think I believe I'm a vessel um, in this universe and so God has to work through me and I've allowed God to work through me in this field so just focus on God and everything will be fine honestly um everything I've achieved honestly it's, it's always been the source has always been God and there's always like an intervention of God in it so focus on God